One of the biggest stories nationwide the past few days, of course, that wildfire burning out in Maui. The flames that swept through ripped people from their homes and ripped families apart. That was almost true for a local family who was there as the fire grew to an unimaginable size. Arman Rahman shares their story. Yeah, Charlotte and Eric, the Ancio family is from Sun Prairie. They plan to spend 10 days at a condo they own in Maui, but that vacation took a turn last Tuesday. In the last full day, things started to change very rapidly. The winds were really bad overnight and the power had gone out. So Bill and Carrie Ancio drove from their condo just north of Lahaina south to the nearest area with power to get gas, leaving their three teenage kids for what was supposed to be a quick trip. Huge power poles, you know, swinging and power lines swinging in the wind. It was a little scary just getting to the gas. Um, there, were, there were literally coconuts falling from the trees. On their way back, traffic stopped. They slept in their van overnight and woke up to a closed highway and a harsh realization. The situation had gotten much worse, obviously, and that's when the, the main fire happened in, in Lahaina. And we knew that we wouldn't be able to get back to the kids after about 48 hours. They were able to text their kids, but that doesn't stop a parent's worry. What we keep hearing is how fast the fire progressed. It was very difficult and our kids are teenagers. They're, they're very smart and they had some money but they're, they were running out of food at their condo and um, running out of cash. They told them to grab what they needed and catch a charter bus to the Kahului Airport where they could meet. And they jumped into action and, and started doing all of that and told us it'll be all right, we will get there. That bus taking the kids right behind the path of destruction through Lahaina. Literally 24 hours earlier, we had been there and they saw what had happened. Um, and. We're pretty, we're pretty shaken up by it. There were people that were in that traffic jam in Lahaina who couldn't get, couldn't escape their cars. They died in their cars from the fire. For the family, relief was waiting for them at the airport Thursday. I asked Carrie, which one are you going to hug first? <laughs> And she looked at me like, are you crazy? I'm hugging all of them at the same time. However, their flight to Madison got pushed to Saturday. But then we were facing the, the prospects of sleeping in our van as a, as a family of five. But the community at home also had their back. Our Charlotte Deleste has a friend who lives on Maui. Charlotte reached out to that family and they graciously offered to host our family for two nights, having that aloha spirit. The aloha spirit that will now have to stay with the people of the island as they try to put their lives back together. And we get to get on a, a plane in another day or so and, and leave all of this and get back to our, our home in Wisconsin. Um, but of course, we'll be thinking about them and, you know, hoping the best and, and doing what we can, I guess. Now, the Red Cross of Wisconsin is sending volunteers to Hawaii, and they say more may be needed. You can head to their website to find out how to help. Armand, thank you. Well done. And Charlotte, well done as well. <laughs> Some residents on Maui are just now able to return to their homes or to see what is left of them. Hawaii's government announcing today the death toll from those fires now stands at 67. The fire burning in Lahaina is officially Hawaii's deadliest natural disaster in state history. A tsunami in 1960 killed 61 people. The death toll is expected to keep rising as search teams scoured the island, especially in the hardest hit town of Lahaina. Hawaii Hawaii's governor toured some of the damage today, making an estimate on how many structures burned to the ground. This is devastating for Maui. We probably have well over a thousand buildings that have been destroyed. Many, many hundreds of families have been displaced. Some residents say they received little or no warning. The Hawaii Emergency Management Agency says no one at the state or county level attempted to activate the warning sirens. Officials say the failure to trigger the all-hazard emergency siren system was largely because of how fast the flames were moving as they worked to coordinate response on the ground. Whoa. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and fiance Lauren Sanchez are pledging to help Maui recover. In an Instagram post today, Sanchez said she and Bezos are giving $100 million to recovery efforts. Other billionaires like Oprah Winfrey have also pledged to help the area.